This morning, it is my honor to introduce Subway Chowdhury. Mr. Chowdhury is a best-selling author and management consultant, and he has provided you your first gift underneath your chair, the book that's a national bestseller, and his title is so appropriate, The Difference. Please take that with you, read it, enjoy it, and live it. His 15 published works have sold more than one million copies and have been published in 20 different languages. He is recognized as both an international authority on quality and uh, management and a generous philanthropist. Subur is a recipient of the Society of Manufacturing Engineers Gold Medal, the Society of Automotive Engineers Henry Ford II Distinguished Award for Excellence in Automotive Engineering, and the American Society of Quality's Philip Crosby Medal. More importantly, Central Michigan University awarded him with the Distinguished Alumni Award in 2003. He received a graduate degree in industrial management from Central Michigan University in 1993, and we are pleased to welcome him here back today. Please join me in welcoming Subur Chowdhury. Good morning. I love Central's energy. The first night I spent in America, I spent in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. I had flown from my home in Bangladesh to Thailand, then to Taiwan, then to Seattle, to Detroit, to Lansing, just to save some money for the airfare. <laughs> then I caught a ride to Mount Pleasant and my new university. It was August 1991, I, and I barely had even a penny in my pocket. I came here for a master's degree, and the department where I wanted to study said there was a fellowship waiting and had told me to arrive two weeks early. I arrived three weeks early to impress my professor. I threw my bags in my room, went to see the professor. This professor looked at me and said, you're supposed to come next week. I said, yes, sir. I came one week early to impress you. <laughs> he looked at me and said, Shubir, unfortunately, I selected someone else for the fellowship. I looked at him and I said, sir, you cannot do that. I cried, I shouted, I cried more. Still, there is no scholarship. The next day, other international students tried to help. They understood my situation. They suggested I get an off-campus job, but I did not have a work visa, and to get an off-campus job would be illegal. I was in America for education, but I did not have any money to register for my classes. So what I did, I began knocking doors. I went to every single academic department to earn an scholarship. I went to sociology. I went to journalism. I even went to English department telling them I'm so good in English. <laughs> After many departments, when I'm almost at the end of the row, I knocked the door of mathematics. The chair, Dr. Richard Fleming, listened to my story. He said, you went to 20 departments, and now it is the 21st one. So if I say no to you, what do you do? I said, I'll go to the 22nd. Then he looked at me and he said, can you do research on polymer science? I told the professor, um, sir, I can do in any topic. I graduated from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur, with a degree in aerospace engineering. So any topic I can master. 
And he gave me a chance. I, selected for, I was selected for Dow Fellowship. I will always be grateful to Dr. Lila Rakesh, who is present here today for making this possible. The fellowship paid for my entire education. And in 1993, I graduated with a master's degree, and I earned the award for the best thesis award from the graduate school. The faculty wanted me to stay and work for a PhD. But I wanted to go out, and I wanted to become the number one in my field. I wanted to be the world's top management expert on quality. My professor was very disappointed. So I told the professor, don't worry about me. Maybe the day will come when I won't have to earn a PhD, and Institute Central will give me an honorary doctorate. Here I am. President Davis, um, Provost, and uh, member of the Board of Trustees, faculties, it is a tremendous honor to be with you this morning. Graduates and families, thank you for allowing me to be part of your special day. Like you, I am a CMU graduate. Now it's twice, now with my doctorate. I shared my story for a reason. It is about making choices. Graduates, the choice you make after today will shape your life, the lives of people around you. Because I'm a little older than you, I wanted to share some stories about how to make those choices. My business is in quality. I help some of the biggest organizations in the world achieve the best. And together, we do meaningful work. When I was a CMU student, I did not understand the word quality or what it meant to business world. So I joined an organization, professional society called American Society for Quality, and paid $10 to become a student member. And then I taught myself about quality. When I graduated, I told my professors the day will come America's top business schools and engineering schools will teach my book on quality. It sounded kind of arrogant. I was young, maybe I was a little arrogant too. But guess what? Five years later, those universities were teaching my book. Within 10 years, I was recognized as the world's top expert in quality. But I still say I'm the dumbest guy in the room. <laughs> Two college degrees, and there is still a lot I need and want to learn. In social media era, we prefer to spend more time with our devices than with our parents and grandparents and loved ones. When I was a little boy, there was no iPhones or even computers. So I spend more time with my grandparents. Now I feel how lucky I was. My grandfather was a very important person in my life. He was an elementary school teacher in one of the poorest of the poor countries in the world. But he was rich with wisdom. He was always teaching me about choices. He would say, Shabir, zero or nine? Out of those two numbers, which is more powerful? Zero or nine? Which one is more powerful? I was five years old. Of course, I would answer, nine is more powerful. And every time, my grandfather would say, no, zero is the most powerful. And I say, Grandpa, why? He would tell me, zero on its own has no value. But as soon as you put a number in front of it, it becomes valuable. Graduates always remember, you alone are that zero. And it is OK to be a zero. Without other human beings, you'll never be a whole. 
When you become successful, and each of you can make an important difference, remember that other people help you succeed. Today is a huge accomplishment for you. You have achieved something many people don't have, a college diploma, and you should be very proud. But you did not do this yourself, by yourself. No one does. You had your professors and friends. You had parents and grandparents. You had brothers and sisters. I know I did. My mom did not want me to leave for America. My father encouraged me. They both acted out of love, and that love guided me. Graduates use today to hug your grandparents and parents and the loved ones. Remember their love and support, and always share your happiness with them. The people who support us are the number in front of that zero. The people who support us are the number in front of that zero. They give us value. I'm very fortunate to have some of those friends and colleagues that made a difference in my life to be present here today in the gallery here. And thank you all for your love. So this is my first piece of advice. Always choose to be a zero. When I left Central, I often heard my grandfather's voice in my head. He used to tell me, Shubir, if I ask you to touch the ceiling or touch the sky, which one are you going to touch? Again, I was a little boy. I would say, oh, that's really easy. Let me touch the ceiling. No, he would say. Always try to touch the sky. I said, Grandpa, why? Touching the ceiling is very easy. He would say, anybody can do it. But if you have a goal to touching the sky, you will always go higher. Graduates, being good enough should be your starting point, not your finish. Touching the ceiling is very easy. Push yourself and go higher. Reach for more with your job, with your family, with your community, and you'll be rewarded. This is my second piece of advice. Always choose to touch the sky. You will achieve so much more than you ever imagined. This brings to my final story. And final is the word people always like to hear in a speech. <laughs> my grandfather used to give me a pen and a coin. A pen and a coin. He would place them in my hand and tells me, should we choose one of the two, pen or the coin? So I would always pick the coin. And because it's a coin, I could go to a store. No, my grandfather would say, choose the pen. He said, Shubhi, if you choose the pen, then you can change the world. But if you choose the coin, you'll buy chocolate, a toy, then coin will be gone. And he also told me that if you choose the pen, you can write, draw, create, and somebody will appreciate your work. The coins will follow. And you will join, you will have so many coins in your pocket. Simple, but very profound. As a boy, I used to, I used the pen to write letters to my heroes. Who wrote me back? Some of them even became my mentors. As an adult, I used the pen to share ideas for making the world a better place. Graduates, choosing the pen means giving yourself permission to be creative. The pen is innovation. The pen is initiative. It is far more valuable than money. Use your Central Michigan education and choose the pen, and you will have millions of coins. The choice is yours. <laughs> you 
Use your creativity, money will follow. I promise you. You will have so many coins, you will have to give some away. I did. Perhaps you will give money to your local library or a charitable organization you love. Maybe you will even give some to CMU. <laughs> I faced a choice when I first landed in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. And I learned there is no scholarship for me here in Mount Pleasant. I traveled 8,000 miles, I was broke. People told me to forget school, get a job, even though it was against the law. But I heard my grandfather's voice. Ignore the quick coins that come from a temporary job. Choose the pen, Shabir. Be creative. Knock on the doors. Knock until a door opens and you find a scholarship that guarantees an education, and I did. I could stand here all morning and tell you stories. I intentionally choose the stories of my grandfather because anything I've done in my uh, business or in my life, some of the teaching my grandfather did shaped my life. So use this principle. These are very universal principles. So I think that you don't want that to tell you stories after stories. You want to celebrate, and you should. Instead, I've shared my latest book, The Difference, which is a book of stories, and it is my graduation gift to you. I hope it inspires you, just as my teachers and students, friends and family, colleagues and clients inspired me. My grandfather was my greatest teacher. He enriched the life of a little boy in Bangladesh who would come to find great success and happiness. Here I am on the other side of the globe sharing his lessons. Be a zero, reach for the sky, choose the pen over the coin. And now this grandson, because of education and hard work and because of a humble, wise grandfather is encouraging you. Graduates, all of us believe you are going to change lives. It is your turn and your choice to make a positive difference in the world. Be a zero, reach for the sky, choose the pen over the coin. Congratulations, class of 2019. Fire up chips. Thank you again for two Wonderful job. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give Shabir Chowdhury one more big round of applause. His message is so poignant. It's about the people. It is about aiming high. And it is also about changing the world. Thank you so much for your words, and thank you so much for the graduation gift. Rakesh, would you please join us in the hooding? At this time, I am pleased to confer upon Mr. Chadry the honorary degree Doctorate of Commercial Science for his outstanding accomplishments. The hood that, Mr. Doc that Dr. Gelt places on his shoulders serves as a symbol of one of the highest, highest university honors. A diploma citing his honor is also now being presented. Let's give them one more round of applause. <laughs>